So today's lesson is over angles in standard position. And the reason, again, we're focusing on angles is, as I said in the past couple videos, to understand trig functions, you must understand their domain, which are angles. Because again, remember, for instance, sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. The domain or the input values is an angle, and the output values of trig is a ratio. And so we'll come back to more about angles in just a minute. Before we do that, Another reminder from past courses is all about quadrants of a coordinate plane. Some of you might remember that the first quadrant would be here, where both x and y are positive. But as a memory trick, because coordinate plane starts with the letter C, I like to start in the first quadrant and make a giant C. So I know that the coordinate or the quadrants are in the order 1, 2, 3, 4. Not only is that useful, also what's interesting about the x axis and the y axis is that they are perpendicular or form 90 degree angles in every single quadrant. So if you're thinking about using degrees, if this is your starting location, this would be zero degrees, this positive y axis would be 90 degrees, this negative x axis would be 180 degrees because every time I'm increasing by 90, and if I keep going down to the negative uh, y axis, I'd have 270 degrees. And then finally, if I went back up here, I would be at 360 degrees, which makes sense with some of your past knowledge that all the way around, or all the way around your circle is 360 degrees. So that is good to keep in mind. So another thing that's useful that relates to angles is really what you're doing to get from the x-axis to the y-axis is rotating. And to get from this positive y-axis down to this axis is rotating. So in this course, I want you to start thinking about angles rather than just something that we measure in degrees as a rotation, because that is really going to help us with the section today. So angles are really defined as rotations and are created by rotating a ray around its endpoint. And we have some new terminology that I want to throw your way. One of which being the initial side of an angle and secondly, the vertex. So if I have a coordinate plane here, your vertex is the endpoint of the ray and it always starts at the origin. So if I label that point, that would be my vertex. The initial side of an angle is the starting position of the ray, and it's always, always, always on the positive x-axis. So if I start at my vertex and draw a line on the positive x-axis, that is where your initial side of an angle starts. Kind of like if you'd excuse me for a minute, if I go back to the previous slide, notice I said that this is where you would start at zero degrees. There is a connection there. So if this is my vertex and this is my initial side, I have another piece called the terminal side, which is the ending position of the ray after you rotate. So what if I rotated in the first quadrant and this is where my angle started and this is where the ray ended? This here would symbolize the actual angle or the rotation. So this symbolism would be my angle in parentheses I will write rotation. Now the arrow is important because it symbolizes direction. And so I happen to choose writing an angle in standard position in the first quadrant, but I also could do an angle in standard position in the second quadrant. So let's say I have my vertex, I have my initial side, and I want to rotate to the second quadrant. My actual rotation would be symbolized by starting at the positive x-axis rotating this direction and landing on the terminal side. And so this, if we go back to yet, uh, the other day's lessons, is that you could call that angle of rotation theta, and you could call this angle of rotation theta. So now let's get into a little bit more specific examples with specific degree measures. So if I were to graph 60 degrees, what I would suggest is, again, drawing the vertex at 0, 0, and drawing your initial side, and then thinking about where would my terminal side land if I was at 60 degrees. 
Well, before we think about that, I think it would be good to label our quadrants again in terms of degrees. 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, and then again, if you go back again, you'd land at 360 degrees. So if I were to say, where does this angle land? I would say it is in the first quadrant between 0 and 90. So to the best of my ability, I would draw where I think the terminal side is, and then my um, rotation would be from the x-axis to the terminal side, so that would be my theta, which is 60 degrees. And again, the arrow, arrow is important to show that you are moving counterclockwise, and counterclockwise always specifies a positive angle. If I were to do 225 degrees, I would draw my vertex again, my initial side, and if you would like to label your quadrants in degrees, 225 degrees looks like it would be in the third quadrant between 180 and 270. So if this is my initial side, I would land in the third quadrant. I know that's not perfect, but to symbolize the rotation, I would st again start at my positive x-axis, rotate around, and show the arrow for the rotation counterclockwise. So this would be theta, and that would be 225 degrees. Last but not least, in terms of the positive angles, I have 270 degrees. So again, let me start with my vertex in my initial side. 270 is an interesting one because, again, if I, instead of rewriting it, if I have 0, 90, 180, and 270, 270 is directly on the negative y-axis. So that means that my terminal side would be here, but my rotation, and please just be careful, is from the positive x-axis all the way to this side, so my theta would be 270 positive degrees counterclockwise. Now some of you may be predicting, uh, we are, we're doing all positive angles, so I bet, ah, correct, I'm going to do some negative angles now. We're going to start with negative 45 degrees. The good news is the idea is the same. You are still going to start with zero degrees, but if you're going clockwise, that represents a negative angle. So we're going to go this direction. And because the angles are negative, this now would become negative 90. This would be negative 180, negative 270, and then back to negative 360 degrees. So it is the opposite rotation. Good news, though, is that we still have the vertex. We still have the initial side. If I was going to go negative 45 degrees, I'd be between 0 and negative 90 in the fourth quadrant. And so this would be my terminal side. And to symbolize my rotation, I would start again at the positive x-axis, but my arrow would hit my terminal side, and now I am going clockwise uh, 45 degrees, or in other words, my theta is negative 45 degrees, according to that picture. Negative 315 degrees. Again, just for the sake of practice, I'm going to say negative uh, 0 degrees, negative 90 degrees, negative 180, and then negative 270 degrees. Here is my vertex, initial side. Negative 315 would go past the 90, past the 180, past the 270, and into the first quadrant at this point. So this would be where my terminal side is. And so my rotation would look from the positive x-axis all the way around, landing on the terminal side. So my theta here would be. And so the theta would be negative 315 degrees used based on this rotation. Negative 180 degrees. Okay, using this idea as a basis, here is my vertex, here is my initial side. Negative 180, we are going to be going from the x-axis past the negative 90 and landing directly on negative 180 degrees which means that my angle would start here and land here, so we'd have kind of a straight line. And so our angle is negative 180 degrees clockwise. These examples I would like you to try on your own first, and when you return I will have the answers, and I, you can, so you can check your work, and I will explain thoroughly if needed.
Okay, so at this point, you could please pause your video and I will check back in with you. All right, guys, feedback time. Uh, both 140 and 330 degrees should have gone counterclockwise, so please make sure that your arrow is pointing in that correct direction. 140 degrees, I got to land in the second quadrant between 90 and 180, so please make sure you are showing this angle of rotation. 330 degrees, I ended up going all the way around and landing in the fourth quadrant between 270 and 360 degrees. So again, make sure you're showing this rotation for your angle counterclockwise. The reason that these two are in a different color is because I have two negative angles, so I am going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So I knew that negative 190 had to between, be between negative 180 and negative 270, pretty close to negative 180. So my rotation was clockwise, as well as negative 90 degrees. I started again at my vertex, good vocabulary, vertex initial side. This would be my terminal side here, and I'm going to negative 90, and this clockwise shows my rotation. So as a sum, please remember all the terminology that we have a vertex, initial side, terminal side, and that angles are really a rotation. All right, guys, again, until next time.